Thank, thank everybody for showing up this afternoon. Another good turnout. Um, before we get started, uh, Bryce asked me to ask you a question. Have he's been doing the social, what do you call it, social media networking? Yeah. Is that the official term? So how many of y'all saw this uh, or saw this advertised on Facebook? Anybody? Okay, that's all right. Good. Sounds, sounds like it's. Uh, what you noticed that I saw that. Yeah. My faculty oh, member wow. too. All right. <laughs> Well, today, uh, Rasul's, Dr. Mo, Rasul Mowai has graciously uh, <clears throat> agreed to present to this class. Um, Dr. Mowai uh, has been here since fall of 2006, same time that I came here. We came here at the same time. Uh, he got his PhD at the University of Illinois. And today, he's going to talk to us about a, a different type of methodology than probably most of us, or perhaps than most of us are used to. Dr. Mowai, thank you. Definitely. I uh, appreciate it. Time. I know Bar I know Brian initially asked me to kind of present this just to give people some ideas on different approaches to conduct research. So that's the intention of this is not necessarily the primary area of my own research, but it is an area that I've used in some in some of the things I've conducted or looked at. So of course this title of the picture is worth a thousand words because that's what we're raising the issue that be these things that we call visual materials have meaning behind them. And the, that meaning that we can uh, we can apply it to a lot of different research approaches. All of this is in the context of this area called visual methodologies, and so we'll kind of go over some examples. And so please let this be an interactive presentation. So stop me, and I can clarify the examples that I have on there are very cursory. So you may need to stop me that you know to further explain how something may be conducted by that. So this is going through. I don't have a clicker, so I'll be walking back and forth. So you don't mind that too. All right. So let's look at this first picture from American Institute of Park Executives. Um, this is one of the precursors to NRPA. Anybody, everybody here has heard of the NRPA, National Parks and Recreation Association. Well, before NRPA was uh, it existed, there were three organizations, or well, five organizations, that definitely that actually came together to then form NRPA. One of which was the Park Executives, all of the superintendents and executive directors of park districts throughout the country. So this is from their annual convention. So just like the NRPA convention, the annual convention of 57 in 1955 in Lexington, uh, not Lexington, actually Louisville, Kentucky. So this is the image, this is the dinner. What, what's your reaction to this? I see people shaking their hands, I see people nodding. What are, the, what, is, what, what, what are all these reactions to this picture? I mean, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Confederate flag up there on the right. Oh, that thing? Yeah. Why don't you just go right to that? You were supposed to get some other stuff. I mean, kind of beat the whole point of the, you know, the, I was hoping to get to that last. But yes, yes, Sean. They're all posing. Yeah, so, yeah, so you start seeing, seeing these elements, all right? And so people are there. We have a sense that this was a formal occasion, right? We also have some other information that's contained on the photograph. So yes, this is how we know it's the 57th Annual Convention because they wrote it on to the actual picture. We know it's the American Institute of Park Executive. These are all elements of looking at Im images, not just going right to what I went right into, right to. Yeah. And I've used this picture for an article that I had uh, that was solicited on whiteness because I raised the issue that um, this was a part of our founding, a condoning. We're not saying necessarily this was a Klan meeting. <laughs> All we're saying is that clearly they had no problem with the flag being on the wall. That's, that's, that's the basic thing that we can assume by this image. Did they put it on the wall? We don't know. You know did they do anything else related to that? that that flag on the wall, we don't know. But we know that they had no problem with the flag being present there. Yeah. But can you really say that? Can you say that some people, maybe it was there and they yes. didn't like it there? Yeah, and, so, and, and, that, and that was part of the discussion I raised in the article was that clearly we couldn't say this for the entire government group, but potentially, but the executives. The, but potentially those who were responsible did not, take, did not demand for the facility to take it off the wall because it still remained for this important photo. Because somebody here could have walked over this and I don't like being in this room with this flag. Exactly. Um, nice. Yeah. Something that I always notice is that there's hundreds of men <laughs> and that probably many of the women are wives. 
Well, yeah. you're jumping the gun. So are you after that I saw it? But, but you're exactly right. That's what I always do. And so, like that. but there's it's different things. So some of the things we're, we're, we're looking yeah, at is, is, is through visual analysis. So when we when we talk about visual analysis, which we'll, which we'll talk about, we'll talk about what are we seeing in visual. Other okay. things could be just making these discussions and points. Yes, Sean? There's a dais at the back. Yes, that's where Garrett Epley is uh, sitting at. Um, everybody know who Garrett Epley is? Okay. Not making any other connections or assumptions. I'm just saying that he was there. All right. So these are questions that could come up. Not the only set of questions when we look at imagery. But these are some questions. What is depicted in this image? All right, so what is depicted? It's an annual convention. For some people, what's depicted is a support of the Confederate flag. It depends on your viewpoint or analysis. But I just wanted to start with this to get our minds stimulated to not looking at just text for, the, for these slides, but also look at images. So let's keep going. So in terms of what we're trying to do for today, is one, talk about the rationale of why visual methodology should be considered. Another thing is to talk about what are visual methodologies. Then we'll talk about examples, just four examples. It's not meaning that it's not more than four, but we only, we only have time to talk about four. Uh, and then through the further consideration for research, what are some ways in which we can incorporate or consider using visual methodologies? Everybody clear on this? And then, We'll open up for more general questions, but again, stop me if you have questions along the way. All right, so rationale, knowledge production. Our primary aim of research is the production of knowledge. We influence not only ourselves as researchers, but we also influence the general population. That's what we are about the business of doing when we conduct research. We, we create trends, we comment on trends, we may influence things that have not even become trends yet based upon any of the research that's produced here at, at, at Indiana University. So to sort of set up the stage for visual methodology, these are some things that sort of moved or helped move our, move our field to even think about it. One, back in 1990, uh, it was stated that adopting the first ways of knowing has the critical advance of overcoming the potential bias of a single paradigm. Well, we have a bias, clearly, but we're trying to ensure that by not having a bias of one way to conduct research that we are open to a number of different ways because what are we conducting? We're conducting research to look at phenomena that's happening. There's a whole widespread examples of ways phenomena can take place, so why should there only be one way to look at it? Knowledge that I've made through all sorts of media, so what we, the information that we gain could be found through inter social interaction, face-to-face, -face, phone by phone, a number of different ways. Everybody's clear on this setup? Visual leisure research, um, it was a, this was an, out of a special issue in general leisure research, but they said that visual leisure, leisure research provides a different kind of data, right? a different kind of data, a different set of information that repossesses research questions in ways that verbal information cannot. So it may provide us with a whole new set of information that goes beyond just the text information that we typically kind of relate to one another with. Right. <coughs> Rationale. Some other things, some other points that are still a heavy use to this day, heavy use of survey or interview methods and current, and current body of research. So you, the use of visual methodology sort of pushes us away from this sort of dominance of these methods. Uh, continuing expansion of technology, especially digital, means that a lot more things are individual than they were back 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. So widespread use of web-based medium by potential respondents are also there. This is something that we need to consider. Camera phones are something that are that are commonplace now, but five years ago they weren't. Ten years ago they weren't even, you know, we were still dealing with cell phones that all flipped, right? Ten, you know, 15 years ago there was still an issue with, you know, from the... Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Watch our track. I, I, I had a phone even before that. Okay, yeah. Oh, wow. Didn't flip. 
But 15 years ago, I remember, you know. I felt so fun. Yeah, it was a big, you know, 